Hey everyone, it's Jennifer with DP Addiction Adventures. I am so glad you're here and welcome to this series on I Am Enough 2023 as we go through some of the struggles that we experience in our lifetime. I am a licensed therapist here in the state of Michigan. I am just going to give some of my thoughts about um, certain things that we do. And for those of you who are new to my channel, I am normally a crafting channel and I had people vote on different things that they wanted me to possibly discuss and do some psychoeducation on. And so this video is centered around anxiety. We all experience anxiety and worry and it's something that plagues every single person in the world whether you admit it or not. Now, the thing that is different between people is how they handle anxiety. Can they overcome it? Can they accept it? Can they work through it? What does it mean and how does it affect their lives when they are working on it? So I'm going to go through a little bit um, of how to maybe address anxiety in your own life. Um, so the first thing that I recommend is that you just are aware. What is anxiety to you? How does it play out in your life? How is it affecting you? Are you avoiding it? Are you looking at it? What does it mean for you? Because when we pay attention to anxiety, the feeling may become more intense at first, but normally it settles down. Scientifically, when we have anxiety, the chemicals that are released in our brain take about 15 minutes to diminish. And so when we have this high feeling of anxiety or panic, however it may come, if we take a moment and lean into it and understand, I'm feeling anxious right now. I'm feeling worried right now. I don't like how I'm feeling. Um, and we, we work with it and we, we understand this is how we're feeling, the intensity of that anxiety will decrease most likely. So I ask, name the feeling. What specifically are you feeling in that moment? Not just I am anxious, um, but if you are able to specifically name it, it'll give you more power over that emotion. So some people merge thoughts and feelings as if they are synonyms. Someone may say, well, I feel like everyone will laugh at me. But the truth is, I feel scared that everyone may laugh at me. And so see how that's kind of different. And then when we name the feeling, we don't want to judge it. We don't want to say, this is horrible. We want to say, this is uncomfortable or this is painful. And so the more we can name it, the more we can just kind of settle in and go, I am scared. I am fearful. Um, I feel overwhelmed. I feel discouraged. I feel sad. I feel lonely. And use those feelings. If we're not scared of those feelings, we can learn to then or choose how we're going to deal with those feelings. If we don't name them and we push them down, that, that makes our brain go, oh, you're not listening to me. So the next time this happens, I'm going to be even louder and louder and louder. And so the more we avoid it, the more we close it off into the closet of our mind, the more we compartmentalize it and then don't go back to address it, um, the, the higher in intensity the next time the feeling will come of anxiety. Uh, so that's, I, I give a scenario of a beach ball and you're in the water and the more you push the beach ball down, the more pressure you feel. And when you release the beach ball, the higher it pops up. And that's, that's what I kind of recommend. Let's, let's look at this. Let's explore it. Let's be aware of it and, and figure it out instead of avoiding it. Once we figure it out, we need to have like a willingness or an openness to the feeling itself instead of avoiding. 
um, when we're busy and we are distracting and never face it, anxiety then begins to tell us this lie. And we're going to go into more detail about the lie, but it's going to, anxiety is actually like a danger response. Um, and so when we avoid the anxiety, then the anxiety goes, oh, we're in danger. Because you're not addressing it, then we're not understanding that we're safe. And so the brain continues to think, I'm not safe. And so you get stuck in this cycle and you become more and more anxious. And so I recommend let's ground in the moment. Let's lean into it. Um, So by being grounding, you're using the concept of calmness. So maybe you listen to music to express how you're feeling. Maybe you dump all of your anxiety and worries in a journal. Um, I do not like to journal, but I realized I don't have to be articulate. Um, I can just write random words. I can sketch them everywhere. I can use different color pens or markers. Um, I can doodle. I can um, write full sentences or just words or whatever I want to journal dump. Completely up to you. When you actually write something versus type it out, it does have a larger effect. Um, And so therefore, I do recommend that you actually write if you are capable of writing. You can also breathe in the moment. There's some great mindfulness tips out there, um, apps that you can do, settling in the moment. Now, if your body doesn't feel like that's working, another technique is to over-exaggerate. So if you're feeling jittery, like shake your hands really hard. If you feel like you run run around the house, run around the dining room table, um, it sounds like, oh no, I'm going crazy, but it's actually helping your mind understand that these feelings are not, they don't correlate with what's actually happening in the moment. Your brain is saying, danger, Will Robinson. And in reality, you're just going into a work meeting or maybe like me, I'm just going on a video. And so I'm not in danger, like my life is in danger. Um, And so it puts in perspective in your mind, how high the danger alert needs to be compared to the situation. Um, Your brain will learn safety over time. So this is very much like a habit similar to brushing your teeth, or making sure you eat breakfast every morning, or when you are on autopilot on your way to work, And you've gone the same way every single time. And then you realize that there's construction. And so the next day you're supposed to take a different route. And yet you still take the same route. Your brain learns habits. So the more you work on this, this is not an overnight fix. It's truly like being aware, being willing to lean into it and understand. So then the next kind of explore what is behind the anxiety that you're feeling Um, for Basically, scientifically, the the lower part of your brain, the brainstem, is the survival brain. It's the part of the brain that's developed from when the brain starts to develop. It's the oldest part of your 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 brain, and in it, it's supposed it's helping you breathe and sleep and your heart beating and all the things that we don't think about. And that's why people can be, you know, brain dead, but yet they can still be off a ventilator because that survival part is functioning body. It's not logical. It's not thinking. It's not rational. And when we're anxious, what happens is that alarm goes off, goes to our feeling and says, ooh, danger, danger. And then the feelings go, oh, I need to be anxious or scared. And then that sends an alert to the front part of our brain, which is the logical part. And many times the feelings override the logic. And so we're unable to calm ourselves down. We're unable to think through in a logical way. And so the key is to, number one, explore the smoke alarm. Why, why is it going off? Why is it going off so intensely? And what ways can we help lower that smoke alarm? An example would be if I'm trying, my daughter bakes delicious cookies. If I try to bake cookies and I forget they're in the oven, um, if you watched one of my previous videos, uh, me and the oven don't get along sometimes and I started a house fire. And so... (laughs) I'll link that up here for you if you want to hear about it. Um, so yeah, if the 
the cookies start to burn. I open up the oven. You know, there's no fire. It's just the burn. And then the smoke alarm starts going off. I know I just burned the cookies. I know I can hit the mute button on the smoke alarm. And because of that, I can stay calm and know that there's not a fire in my house because I've checked everything out. I've become aware of the situation. I have kind of had this willingness to assess. And then now I'm exploring what like what's going on in the situation and then by doing that I'm like oh there's not a fire how do I respond and I can hit the mute button on the smoke alarm and that's what we're doing in our brain we're kind of saying okay is this something that we are in life or death danger or is this something that our brain is kind of having this false intensity and if so how can we help our brain understand that we're safe and so we want to clarify to ourselves, are we in danger now? Define danger for ourselves. What does that mean? And are we in danger? And we could be emotionally in danger. And so if we are emotionally in danger, that's what the next step we're going to talk about. What do we do in that instance? So we're going to clarify. Then we're going to also see why we're exploring what thoughts may be making this worse um, because our feelings are now in charge instead of our thoughts being in charge. Our feelings are telling our thoughts what to think. And so we call it distorted thinking. There's 10 or 12 different ways to distort. There's like an all or nothing thinking. Um, there's a black and white. There's catastrophizing where everything that could go wrong will go wrong. There's mental filtering. This I have a great example for this. If my boss calls me into her office when I first started at this job I'm in now, my previous job when I got called into the office, it was always my fault. I mean, even projects I didn't even touch, it was always my fault. And um, and so when I left that job and got this job, I would get called into the office for you're doing a great job, like. You know, it's it was all affirming. It was all positive. But for years, every time I got called into the office for a meeting to give me updates or to tell me things are going well with the team or whatever, I would have this anxious feeling inside that I was going to be told I'm not doing well or I did something wrong. And so that's mental filtering. When you have a previous situation and then you're applying it to today's situation, when in reality, it's it's two completely different days. It's two completely different sets of people, separate events, things like that. So there's many types of distorted thinking um, in that way. And so once you explore all of this, you're then, like I said, going to choose. You're going to choose, what am I going to do about this? Um, so there's two different ways to look at it. There's one where it's like locus of control. Basically, um, what is and what is not in your control? That's a hard one, right? Because we want to be like, people need to stop gossiping about me or people need to stop saying bad things or commenting on the Facebook group or people need to um, stop doing things that offend me. And we can't control people. We can't. And we can't control their tone, their action, how they think, how they feel, just like they can't control us. And so we need to evaluate, are we expecting others to change? And therefore, that affects how we feel because they're, they're not going to change. And so we need to separate what can we choose and what can, or what can we control and what can we not control. And so an example um, might be, um, I, I cannot control if my mother likes my cooking. All I can control is that I cook the best I can. And maybe I pick different meals based on what she likes or doesn't like. But then if she comes over, now this is all fake. My mom loves my cooking and I love her cooking. But if she comes over and doesn't like my cooking and insults me, 
how am I going to respond to that? So I might be anxious because she's coming over and I have to cook. And so I have this anxiety. And so then what am I going to do? I'm going to go through these steps. I'm going to say, I feel scared. I feel intimidated. I feel um, demeaned when she does this stuff. And then we're going to look at, you know, the next step, leaning in, willingness. Like, am I going to do the deep breathing? Am I going to listen to music that expresses how I feel? Am I going to journal dump it? Am I going to take a walk? Am I going to make what I want to make because I like it? And if she's not going to like it, then at least I'm going to like it. And so I'm going to go through all those steps and I can control how I respond. I can control that I'm going to make a dish that I enjoy and that my husband enjoys. I'm going to um, do the best that I can and, you know, different things like that. Maybe I take a half day off of work the next day to kind of debrief because I know I'm going to be anxious from the night before. What can I control in my world to help me feel supported and safe in, a, in an area that I can't control because I can't control her response? Now, again, this is all, my mom watches my videos. I love her to death. This is all fictitious. Um, so that's that's one of the things that you can do. Um, so the next area to clarify is looking at the values. What is important to you when assessing how you're going to deal with anxiety. So an example is I, and this is true, I get anxious when I go to the doctor when I step on the scale because I'm going to see the weight and my doctor may or may not say something. And then I'm, I feel judged. I feel insecure. I feel um, like I'm not good enough. Well, that's a thought, see? That's a thought. I feel like I'm not good enough. So we need to change that to why do I not feel good enough? I feel X, Y, and Z. And so what do I do um, is I look at what's most important in my value. Where do I focus my energy on? So when I'm anxious and getting on the scale, is it important for me to, like, where's my priority? Is it important for me to be healthy because I'm sick and I need to get the doctor to look at me? Is it important for me to find out what's going on? Um, what is, what's going on, right? And, or is it important for me to know what the doctor is thinking or whether the nurse judges me, which that's distorted thinking. And so you kind of look at your values, what, what's important to you in order to overcome your anxiety. And if it's not important to you, then how can you let that go and not participate in something that would bring you anxiety? So what can you keep and what can you let go? So another example, I hear a lot behind the scenes is about comments that people leave on Facebook and the negativity um, in responses to those comments. So I, someone may be anxious what others think about their Facebook post. And so going through this, what do you keep and what do you let go of in your mind? Is it important for you to share your progress with others or with your friends? Is it important for you to be a part of a group? Is it important or important for you just to enjoy your craft? And is it important for you to turn the it in for a prize? Um, is, is avoiding things more important than facing them? I guess that's kind of the bottom line. Or is it important for me to be validated by, validated by strangers or by friends? And so once we get to the values, we start to think about, okay, now how do I act and how do I accept um, the, the things that I hold valued? So an example um, with the Facebook group would be, I don't care about other people, strangers seeing my progress, but I do care about my friends seeing it. And so maybe I can do a group chat with my friends and I can post my progress. And so therefore I can feel supported and avoid the negativity out in the world because we can't stop negative people. We just can't. I mean, no matter how many great admins that you have and anything like that, it's just people are negative. And so that's, that may be a solution for you. 
Um, one small thing, one small thing that lines up with your values can be something that you change. So like I said, you could post to a chat rather than a full Facebook group. If you're struggling with, um, like higher levels of emotion and you're not sleeping well, maybe you go to sleep a little bit earlier. Um, if you're struggling with connections, like I mentioned, you know, the scenario with my pretend mother, if you're struggling with that, then, you know, you might choose to do something that you like to do so that no matter what she says, you're enjoying the food. Those are small things, but there's also sometimes that we can't control. And so Therefore, is it easier for us to let go of them than to try to push somebody to change? People are not going to change unless they want to. And so make space for those emotions. It's okay to feel. It's okay to let things go. By letting things go, you're not affirming that person and saying what they're saying is true. You're not affirming the situation to say that there was anything you should be worried about. What you're doing is you're taking care of you. So just to bring it all back together, when we feel anxious, it is our alarm system alerting us that we are not safe. And so how do we respond to that alarm system? We first, we check it out. What's going on? Are we safe? Are we not safe? We become aware of what we're feeling. Then we lean into, is this something I need to calm myself down on? Is this something that I need to take action on? Is this something that I need to overcome? Yep. And then we go a step further and we clarify and we seek our values and we work on what we can and can't change. And we say our emotions and and we start working through that anxiety. And pretty soon you get to the point like myself where I know in my head my boss cares about me and I am doing the work I'm supposed to do. And I love my staff and I love my clients and I love my job and my research and what I'm good at. And so when she calls me in, it's not whether or not it's a bad or a good thing. It is what can I learn from the conversation I'm about to have with her? Can I learn that I'm doing great things? Can I learn that I have a training up and coming that I'm going to be leading? Can I learn that there's something I need to tweak Um, that I need to do a little bit different to help support my staff or to be even better at my job. And so refocusing, reframing, looking at the situation, being able to assess how I feel, being able to over um, work through what I feel um, was very important. So I hope this video helps um, just explain a little bit about anxiety without getting too scientific and just kind of getting to the heart of it. And I hope you enjoy this I Am Enough 2023 series. And I can't wait for the next time. Down below is a Google Doc that you are welcome to fill out. It's just a couple questions. It's anonymous. Um, You can fill out what you have a question about. And then I hope that I can either email you or answer them in one of my lives up and coming on Friday. So be blessed. Take care. And until next time, see you later.